Well, to be honest, we couldn't believe it at first, but Beringer actually told us they watched our RD8 review. We then sent them a list of stuff, and they already implemented most of it. So let's take a look at what's new in firmware 212. Hello everyone, this is... Probably the first thing you'll notice is that you can now actually see which patterns are used or empty. It's like we were running around in darkness for two years and someone finally gave us a flashlight. But uh-oh, when copying a pattern, these guides are suddenly gone. It would be very helpful to know whether you're about to overwrite a pattern that's in use or just copying to an empty slot. The same goes for erasing patterns. It would just give you better guidance overall. Polymeter is no longer a global setting by default, but a pattern-specific setting. That's a good choice, as it is less confusing to novice users, and it's just more practical. You'll probably only notice this after a factory reset, so if you want to change this setting, you can find it under Settings, Prefs, Polypreference. Just set this to Pattern. Autofill now works with every pattern, not just patterns 13 to 16. Wonderful. Flam now works on the closed hat. That bug is gone. And when programming Flam or Probability, you can now actually see the underlying steps. No more memorizing or guessing. Existing steps are white, and when you place a modifier on them, they turn into a lighter rose color. If there's no underlying step, it's just a deep red. And you can change the probability of flam amount directly from inside this mode, which is awesome. You know what would also be great? If you could see the running light of the sequencer in these modes. Oddly, this guide for the underlying steps isn't there in repeat mode, where we can place sub-steps. It would also be really helpful there. But I'm not too sad about that one, because there's now something even better. Here's the hi-hat track in normal sequencer mode. If I activate note repeat, I can now hold any step, and as soon as I press the trigger button, the current repeat setting, 1, 2, 3, or 4, will be applied to that step. A super fast way of placing sub-steps or rolls. I noticed that when you program the open and closed hi-hat together on the same step, you get a third closing hat sound, like on the RD6. That's great! I'm pretty sure it wasn't there before, but I could be wrong. If you still have the old firmware, I'd be glad if you could check and tell us in the comments. You can now have negative swing by dialing it in from 25 to 49%. Personally, I don't use negative swing, but it's there for those of you who need it. Well, what else? The analog clock now has a new 1 pulse per second setting. Ah, this is a big one. The RD8 now offers instant pattern switching. Normally, when selecting a pattern, it's played after the current pattern has finished playing. But if I hold the pattern button while selecting a pattern, the sequencer now instantly jumps to that pattern. We enter it at the current playback position, so we can freely remix patterns. This, of course, works best when the patterns have a compatible BPM setting. We've updated our RDA cheat sheet with all the new features. Two aliens down, just 12 more to go. You can find this on our Patreon. There are also some great drum patterns for your RD8 on there. But now for the good part. Since this whole thing of me nagging about stuff and Beringer actually listening to us and implementing my ideas worked so well, let's try this again. Sometimes I want to experiment and try if another voice is better suited for what I've programmed, or I want to double a track for more oomph. So I'd love a way to copy all the sequencing data from one instrument to another. Maybe by pressing copy and then the select button of the instrument. Then the RD8 would ask me where to copy the data by flashing the other instrument select buttons. You know that situation when you're developing a beat and because you were doing this in an endless loop, you accidentally place the first beat somewhere else instead of the front? By itself this sounds alright, but when you chain this to other patterns, of course it doesn't connect. I 
think it would be great if you could just shift all steps to the left or right. That would also invite more experimentation. Let me show you what I mean. For single instruments, you could hold the step button and press left or right. If you want to shift all instruments, you could hold the pattern button while pressing left or right. While the sequence is running, there's little visual feedback on what instruments are actually playing. What if the select buttons light up every time the respective instrument is played? And this would be really good for the blinkiness rating. I think this last one would blow people's minds. What if you could combine multiple repeat values? Let me explain. If I press 1 and 2 together, both will light up. And this will give me three repeats. 1 plus 2. Triplets! Or I press 1 and 4, this gives me 5 repeats. We can finally program Childish Gambino's sweatpants on the RD8. Press all four buttons at once and you get 15 repeats. Or maybe make it 16. Nobody needs 15 repeats. I mean, these four buttons are practically a binary input for numbers from 0 to 15. Why not use that? As far as we know, the upcoming RD9 is built on the same software architecture as the RD8. Which means, all these firmware improvements will likely already be present in the RD9. Which is really good news, if it ever comes out. Or should I say... If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up and tell us what you think in the comments.